Hi and welcome back to M Driven Learning Course. This is chapter 15. Last chapter, chapter 14, we introduced the M Driven server. So um, we're gonna make um, good use of that in this um, chapter. But uh, first, we're gonna create a real use case for why we need it. So since we have the car and we have the registration number. So one thing is that we want to assign a unique registration number to each car. Let's do a method to ensure that we get a um, unique registration or rather a registration number. So get new registration number in order to actually we want to return a string from this yeah uh, let's do it like this so this get new registration number what do we need to do in order to uh, get a new number well first let's assume this is a comment uh, indicator. Let's assume that the format should be three letters and uh, three numbers. This is the standard in Sweden, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, so in order to um, generate this, we will need some kind of um, counter on where we are. Um, and um, have that counter as a global so that everyone that generates numbers can can share it um, so let's say that uh, the best place to to store globals is on a singleton object we already have a singleton object in this model so i'm going to use that and that's the sys singleton and the operator to actually access the single instance is OCL single top. So on this object, let's say that we have a um, counter for the first letter. And the way I'm going to do this is to have a counter for the first letter, second letter and third letter, and then for the number, because these can go from um, capital A to capital Z and uh, this one as well and this one as well so um, um, so Let's say that this is an integer number. I'm gonna add a new integer, integer attribute to this OCL singleton. So I'm gonna say that this is an integer. And I want to take that one. And uh, Yeah, let um, letter one equal plus one. So I want to increase it with one. But of course, uh, once uh, <clears throat> letter one gets bigger than said, then I want to. Um, Yeah, actually, um, what do I want to do? I guess I want this one to be A, A, and I only want to increase this one initially until and this one is at Z, then this one should increase one, just like we do with numbers, of course. <clears throat> so, let's say that um,
We're well, gonna do it the other way around, no problem. Um, so letter one, if um, letter one is uh, bigger than, in order to go from character to an integer and back, you can do like this. Um, so let's say that I. I'm just gonna take number Z or the letter Z. If um, letter one is uh, so, if letter one is uh, larger than Z, then we want to do something else and. Then we want letter one to be equal um, 65, or rather, we want to return 65 from this. Mm. And also, this is true if letter one is less than. 65. So either way, it should default back to 65. Others, other, um, else it will be what we had when we increased it with one. So this is wrong, it should be in. <clears throat> so from this we get the uh, the letter and uh, we want to take that letter and turn it in or rather the number for the letter and we want to turn it into a uh, actual letter so I'm gonna get a all this result and feed it into this so from this we get a st uh, string back so this is uh, returning one of our um, <coughs> letters let's say that I'm gonna do this for all three. Yeah, let's not overdo it. Um, we can just um, so if um, actually coming to think about it, I should not have this um, um, this case. Here, that's better sold somewhere else. So, um, if this letter is bigger than Z, then we return 65, that's okay. But what we also should do is to um, um, prior to returning 65, we should take the second letter and uh, increase it um, and we don't have the second letter attributes gonna um, add that as an integer as well so uh, now I react to me having repeated all this uh, multiple times. So I'm gonna um, lift that out of, of this to let uh, Singleton 
be equal to this in I'm gonna do a parenthesis around everything mark it all and press tab to in um, to move uh, the whole section now I have the singleton in this I'm gonna uh, simplify a bit to reduce the text Like that so what happens here is that if um, um, the letter one is larger than Z and then we increase the letter two by one otherwise and return 65 otherwise we just return letter one and um, so and we convert that into a character so we're gonna assign that to our um, so that's gonna be our new letter one yeah so uh, I did it ro this wrong I converted it to a character when uh, we're storing them as integers so we're gonna first focus on increasing the integers and then we're going to do the characters afterwards so um, now I have increased the uh, reg number letter one current character by one unless it uh, has reached Z in that case it will um, reset back to 65 or A um, and uh, yeah I guess to make that clear that this is A we could replace 65 with A that's the same thing so having done that's the first letter and now we pretty much want to do the same thing with the, the second letter can just copy this and say that the letter 2 should be letter 2 uh, plus 1 and I'm gonna assign a new letter 2 current to letter 2 and if that is larger than said I'm gonna assign letter 3 Uh, increase letter 3 by 1 and um, otherwise it's letter 2 that is returned and thus assigned to this one okay and then we're gonna need this one as well then mm. add that as an integer And the last one is letter three. I'm gonna take letter three position position and uh, increase that by one, and increase this. So and. Uh, So what we're gonna do if um, um, the third letter runs out, uh, don't have a plan for that really, just gonna leave it. Um, we don't have four letters, so leave it like this. So this piece of code then actually increase the, um, the letter letters of it and we then want to increase also the number part of the registration number um, this one and we don't need to be as careful with that so um, number part is reg number 
number yeah I guess it's gonna call number number part then to be consistent and that one we're gonna assign if it's larger than um, 999 then we're gonna return yeah, zero otherwise we're gonna return number part and we don't have that one That's also an integer. Okay, so now we have all the the values um, for the new registration number. We're gonna return the new re registration number, and <clears throat> we do that by appending these strings so this one but that's a number so we want to turn that into a string with append also the number part um, I'm gonna do a two string on that and oh we want to zero pad that mm. pad And, the, and to zero pad, we can do it like this. So a two string and one, two, three. And we're making use of of um, of this outside of the let that won't do. So we're gonna move this one inside. So a word about the uh, semicolon um, that must uh, separate um, expressions. So the last expression that uh, actually returns the value to um, from our function here uh, should not have a semicolon. Uh, it's only a separator between. So that's why it will report. And now it's okay. This is just a rendering issue. If I go out of this and go into it again, it should be should not uh, have the squiggly lines. But if I have a semicolon here, it will because uh, now it doesn't return anything because it expects a, an expression that returned the um, expected type, the string from here. Uh, removing that means that this is what we will return this is the last expression so it will convert um, um, this to a number 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 mm. if let's see so this is the get new registration number 
gonna uh, look at this. Yes, it has um, the new attributes, and let's uh, give this these a default value when you are created. Um, <clears throat> default DB value um, sixty five. 65 65 can also have them as a initial value so the difference between an initial value and a db value the db value is whenever there's a new object created in an empty database the, and uh, if they are left for null values then uh, the database will use uh, the default db value instead if um, however uh, the initial value is what's happening in memory as we create a new object and then we also can set it to uh, 65 in this case so this is just part of the dynamics i'm not sure that it will have any impact on us now because this is a singleton so this is a only object so having done this uh, there are major changes to the model there are new um, mm, and I have this to one I guess um, so we need to evolve our model on the, on the server so this is connected to the local host I'm going to check that it's okay it's not because I've uh, closed it since last time so I'm going to select this one and uh, start that server and um, see that it's okay and then I'm going to upload this model and I'm going to see that um, I get the stuff added good now i can verify that my method on a car get new registration number really works i'm gonna do that by using the um, the debugger i'm gonna use against m driven server and i'll start the debugger and i'm gonna search for a car I'm going to take one of these cars and drag it into, oh, sorry, that's off screen. So what I did was to use this button to get the seeker. I search for a car and I take one of the cars and drag it onto this green button. And then, and then I get the, the outer form, but I also get this self variable set on this expression. That means that self now is a, this car that I assigned the old car one and the, this car um, will now have uh, an expression or, or a method that's an action so I'm gonna switch um, the debugger context to be action and go into edit mode to see if I can find it get new registration number and um, if I call that if I press F5 here or execute here I get BBB001 okay so it sort of behaves but it uh, consumes all the um, registration numbers um, wrong somehow so I'm going to cancel here and um, uh, go back to see what I did wrong or maybe what I can do it's a better way is to to see what I'm doing wrong I'm gonna use this step function so this is the expression and I'm gonna start the expression and then I'm going to step into. Uh, so then I 
um, in the expression of the method. And then I'm going to start that and the step, 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 and see what happens. Um, so here I can see that um, and the current uh, letter one is 66. I'm going to see where this goes wrong. Yeah, so this will actually um, um, increase um, the le letter 2 uh, every time, but uh, I only interested in, I'm only interested in increasing letter 2 um, in this case when letter one is uh, bigger than set otherwise it shouldn't so this one should go and this one should go this one should be there because i'm always interested in increasing the number part mm, for some reason i'm not sure if that's a smart way but uh, anyways so i head back to my method and correct the um, the bug removing this and um, saving that and also uploading the new model because I've made changes to uh, things that might not exactly influence the DB schema but still um, it changes the checksum of the complete model so in order to have things consistent and working I'm pretty I want to do this now I'm going to reread the model because this uh, debugger was started with the old model so I'm going to reread it and now I lost the self uh, or the object here so I'm going to bring up the seeker again on the new started model and I'm going to take that one and drag it over here so um, and uh, I'm going to F5 this to execute it now I see I have BAA let's see what happens if this goes to Q R S T U V Z, now that yeah, that sort of behaves the way I wanted it to. This is okay. Let's see what happens if we run up to a thousand on the numbers. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to cancel on all that and see that. Mm, good. Um, so now we have a method that actually can give us a unique registration number and also uh, remember the um, registration number. Um, on the sys singleton so that uh, every time we call it it will be a new number uh, and now we um, are challenged with uh, actually making sure that uh, uh, everyone respect this because we're going to have multiple users all doing new cars and if they call this they will use the values on the sys singleton that they have loaded. So we need a way to make sure that um, <clears throat> we all agree, um, actually that we synchronize our access to these global variables that we now have put on the sys singleton. And that's a um, tricky case um, that uh, we run into um, every once in a while. Um, and it's um, um, we need to have a strategy for how to handle that first we're gonna take this new number and assign it to the re registration number one good place to do that would be in the state machine where we um, go from a creation into brand new and we can have like a, an, an entry action when we are in brand new that we do self dot registration number um, equals or assigned self get new registration number 
Um, so that's the um, sort of the initial naive uh, wave that um, we may think will be enough. But let's see what happens if um, um, we um, upload this model. And we um, run this um, turnkey application. And I go into the car seeker and it wants me to log in. If I do a new car, I get a new number. That's good. And I save that. Head back and do a new car. I get another number. That's also good. Um, I save that. So, <clears throat> what's the problem then? Well, if I get um, yet another browser and uh, So the problem is that this um, B user is on the same browser in the same context, so they share cookie. So we actually need to um, switch the um, to a another browser that's in another user context. So in Chrome, you can do this by switching the uh, user of the browser here so since this since this switch to to B I'm gonna use this as a and uh, since we are now two different sessions, we can, uh, and I see that uh, I've removed uh, the new car uh, action from the B user because it's uh, um, an access thing. And let's see. Not to hide anything, we're just gonna verify that it, that's an access thing that we actually did. Mm, so car seeker there's that view and we will look at this new car action and we will see that it has a access group is administrator so um, that's why a, the a user is not an administrator but the b user is not mm, and we can have it like that not a problem um, so now we have one browser that's logged in as, um, yeah, let's log that one in as A as well. Log in as A. So the issue that I want to address is that these two sessions don't really know about each other so if I do a new car here it will get this number but uh, um, we haven't saved that yet so the server is not really aware that uh, this number has been assigned so if I do a new car here I will get the same number 
these are two different cars, but they have the same number. So that's the use case that we really, really, really need to avoid. <clears throat> and the best way to avoid it is to serialize the assignment of the number to have something that uh, mm, lifts out the assigning of the number to a central position that's that there is only one that can do this and that it will do if there are multiple requests to assign a number they are done in sequence so one by one so how do we do that um, yes, that's a um, common need and uh, actually we go to the wiki and we have a good um, support system for just this kind of uh, need and it's called a sync ticket. So here you can read about the async ticket. Um, basically it's a way to send a job up to the server and have the server serialize those jobs and uh, then you can uh, um, dispatch stuff that needs to be serialized to the server and just get the result um, and to get uh, this into action um, uh, we want to uh, follow this pattern so th that pattern is actually available for us already in I think Um, in this section of model examples, um, so they're gonna download the sysasync package um, as a merge model, and uh, then I'm gonna head back to my model and uh, merge with something that ended up in the downloads folder. So this sysasync merge model. And what that rendered me was this new diagram with a sysasync ticket and um, added also a um, some methods on the sys super class. So sys super class is the default class for at least I think there are yeah, the default super class for these packages. So that's good. So that means that this method will be available on all. And what I can do is do a sync method name, and then there will be a ticket uh, created for me. Um, and that ticket will um, go up to the server and the server will be the one that actually execute uh, these things. So, uh, having done that, we can um, instead of actually assigning the number here, we can change this to um, to call. Let's introduce a new method called. Um, on this object called self um, actually assign new number and um, I'm gonna go to here and add that method with uh, add method actually assign new number and 
and this is uh, that's what actually is going to happen there there so why I did it this way was for me to be able to actually not run this method straight up but rather do the self and do a sync because then I can send in the name as a string only like this so this will actually not be executed here and now but on the server once the object is saved let's see how that would look so I'm um, um, uploading this new model I get new things added to the database as I run the application and I do a new car I see there's no registration number as of yet but uh, once I um, save this what will happen is that the server is hopefully getting a sys async ticket and uh, once the sys async ticket has been uh, handled the server executes our logic and uh, assigns the value and since the value was assigned this um, UI is updated so having done this I can go to this other one and um, do a new car from this and save that one so save is needed in order for this sys async ticket to actually show up on the server and uh, within short I will get a number here mm. and these won't ever be the same because even if I do this uh, really close together like um, save save I get uh, two different numbers um, so let's check on the M driven server how this looks mm, the wrong server that was 5000 and a one two three four five six so this is something this is managed under something we call um, periodic actions so there's one that checks the sys async ticket so and one that deletes old sys async tickets so what we can do is see in the database that we actually have sys async tickets and these have all been handled with car actually assigned new number and they reported no issue and they are done so that's good um, also in the M driven server I can see the work info on the different thing that goes on in the server so you read this diagram like this these are all the 
named events that uh, we track in the server. So this is uh, usually what happens when um, user fetch data um, request new view models that drive data fetches. This is usually what happens when user saves data. Um, these that start with admin is what happens internally in the M-driven server itself to manage itself. This evolve is what happens when um, we upload a new model and uh, we want to change the DB schema based on the new model. And uh, this periodic action check is the pulse of the M-driven server that uh, continuously check for um, server-side jobs to make sure that um, um, if there are any pending that they are executed. Um, So currently we are also allowed to write in this field locally, but that's not something that we want to do any longer now that we have a algorithm to assign it. So let's head back to the diagram and right clicking this to see changed by, then we get a list wherever this is actually changed. Now we can see that our method is also included, that this is something that actually changes the attribute of registration number. But uh, this one, proper car view registration number has a read write expression on it. So I'm gonna click that open and registration number. Mm, and we're gonna make that uh, read only by sending in the expression true. So this is the OCL expression of boolean true that will always be true. So read only will always be true. And then um, uh, we won't be able to update it. If I save now and head back to see where can it be changed still and changed by so the method but also in this one, the template for a car transfer and ownership document report. So that was the report that we did some chapters back. And it's uh, a report will never actually change data. It's just uh, um, a way to push data out. So it's a good um, idea to set the this one to true. And uh, actually we can set the whole um, view model to uh, true to avoid uh, uh, confusion when we check where this can be changed and can only be changed by actually assign new number and actually assign new number can is only referenced by well it's not referenced by anything and why is that? Um, that's because this uh, <clears throat> this state diagram calls it with do a sync and has it named as a string. So this is executed on the server. So you need to look up for that bit. Okay. Very good. So all in all, we have uh, covered a lot of ground, um, maybe not um, with functionality, but uh, conceptually to be able to execute things on the server is a major um, pattern that we need to use from time to time. Uh, think of this as assigning um, um, seats on an airplane for example how do you know that uh, if you have a uh, hundred different bookers that they don't uh, all sell the same seat so that kind of uh, issues we will be able to solve with this good thank you for listening yes a small uh, addition to this 
as I was editing this video I was concerned that uh, actually as from that we assigned a new um, when we created a new car and we saved it it took quite some time before the registration num number to come up so um, after some further thinking I remembered that uh, we will really need this to be as quick as possible uh, in this case uh, so once we save this we want it to be pretty quick to to actually assign the number and to influence that we go into the registration number and we put it on the um, the tagged values collection we bring that dialog up and uh, if you don't see them you refresh them from wiki but uh, one of the options is to set the real time on an attribute so that's what I did to speed the refresh rate up for this attribute because uh, whenever an attribute of uh, a real time marked that is marked with real time is changed um, all clients that uh, look at this um, get a push notification that they should uh, fetch it so that makes things go faster okay that's it